Hey guys, this is Jim, k and 4 ycd and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I wanna to share a little project I wanna do, and uh, it's about this. So this device was in my last video. This is that DC-operated uh, smart relay switch that I showed you guys, and I, I have a couple of these. Uh, one of them is already in, in production. It's hooked up to uh, my Flex 6300 so I can turn it on and off. It uses a soft on and soft off. And this will toggle that soft on and soft off. But that's not what we're going to do today. This is my MFJ 993B tuner. And this is a great tuner. Uh, it's 100 watt or 150 or 300 watts. It'll do either. And of course it does the tuning thing. Let me turn that up, right side up. And you can see we have multiple options for antennas here. And it has a remote port. This runs off 12 volts, ground, balance line, random wire, and two PL259s, or excuse me, SO239 connectors here for coax. So it's a great tuner. And this will let you switch antennas. So if you have two antennas hooked up to a radio, for example, with a single port, you can push the antenna button and change which antenna your single port radio is connected to. So for something with a single antenna, like an IC706, I have an old one, or a 7300 or a 991A, or any other batch of radios that only has one antenna port, this gives you the option to have multiple antennas, and that's very cool. Um, I've had this about three years or so since I got my ham license. Love it, great tuner. This thing will tune a chicken soup can. And when I got it, I saw that it had remote capability available. So I said, well, I gotta have that. And this is the remote capability. And what this is, is a nine pin DB9 on the back of this. And of course it matches the DB9 on the back of that. So you could set this out of the way and then put this over you know, somewhere close to your hand so you're operating and you don't have to reach over and you know like a barbarian and reach three or four feet over and push your tuner button and that function works great mostly and it's fine but it's not really remote and so i got excited a couple years ago because i thought well you know that's a nine pin port this is a serial gadget i can hook this up to a raspberry pi or something and then do functions on my antenna tuner via a Raspberry Pi and switch it. Well, it's not serial. And I am not nearly smart enough to hook up GPIO pins and switch things with a Pi. So this has kind of sat in a box of random stuff since then and um, not been used. But what I discovered and what we're gonna look at today is that not only is this not a serial port, these are just mechanical buttons. All these do is toggle each of the lines in the nine pin port. And guess what else we have that will toggle lines in a port? Either normally open or normally closed like I showed you guys last week, right? So it occurs to me that with one of these, don't need this, this will replace this because what I've got is a nine pin breakout cable, which I don't have in front of me at the second. And we can hook in the appropriate lines to the nine pin breakout cable run it to the back of the tuner, and we can change antennas on the tuner. And I could probably find a fancier one, and then we could, you know, push the other buttons on the tuner as required. But for the most part, if the tuner's in auto mode, all I'd ever want to do, and all I ever really did with it, was switch antennas. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay, so what we've got here is, here is our smart relay switch. And then here is our nine pin cable. And this is what I call the breakout cable. It's got a DB9 on the other end and that's plugged into our antenna tuner. Our antenna tuner is hooked up to a Miati um, battery at the moment. And the wires we're interested in are these two. This is the purple wire and the ground wire. And before I hook it up, let me show you. This is kind of awkward, but you can see it's on antenna two right now. And if I short these two wires together, it switches over to antenna one. So that is exactly what we're after. Let's move him out of the way. Let's turn the power off on that guy. We want to hook 
our switch up. And what we're going to do is we're going to, and these are both on ferrules, and when I put this in production, I'm going to tape over each of these so they don't short each other out and randomly change settings on the tuner. And what we're going to do is set them down here on two of our connectors. And it doesn't really matter whether we do normally open or normally closed. Um, normally open is going to give us antenna 2 by default. So we're going to use normally closed, which puts us on antenna 1. And then if I want to change it, then I have to fire the switch and go from there. So we're going to put that guy in our common. And then, unfortunately, I figured out what I had to do from looking at the schematic and the documentation. But then I had to figure out which wires I needed. And you have to have, whether you're using the actual remote switch or doing this um, jerry-rigged way, you have to put a couple of buttons down specifically on this tuner. And this would probably work for almost any tuner on the market um, at this level. I don't know that I would do something like this with a, with a flex auto tuner, but a flex auto tuner has all this functionality built in. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our ground lead in the common, and we're going to put our antenna lead in the normally closed. And then we're going to fasten those down. Okay, perfect. What we're going to do is I'm going to hook up the smart switch onto a, uh, a battery pack and put power on him and let him boot up. All right, so he is booting up. Let's turn on our antenna tuner, and you'll see we are on antenna one. So you can see we're on antenna one right now. And this is where we installed it in the last uh, video, and I called it the dingus. So if I click this, it switches us to antenna two. Turn it off, and we're back on antenna one, just like that. And the beauty of this is, while the Flex has two antenna connectors on the back of it, the 6300, the older one that I have, and I can switch antennas within Smart SDR, if I want a tuner on each of those antennas, I have to run two tuners. And that's what I've been doing, a couple of um, LDG tuners, the smaller ones. And that works, and it's fine, but that's extra cables and more stuff. And this guy, I don't need this with my Flex 6600, so I'm going to put him out here with the 6300 for the time being. This costs all of $8 for this thing, I think, and... Uh, five or seven dollars for this and I'll put links to these uh, below in the description there'll be affiliate links from Amazon it won't cost you anything extra but it gives the channel a little bit of money if you buy this guy works on USB power which is how I've got him hooked in now or you can run it anywhere from um, I think something like 9 to 22 volts straight DC so what I will do is I will put him on a power pole connector and hook him into the 12 volt power pole block that I have over there by the radio setup. And he'll sit there and, and run and be fine. But now I can change antennas and I can tune the antenna I'm changing to. Because this thing, like most of these kind of tuners, has two inputs but only one output. And if uh, even if we had two outputs, I'd still have to have a way to switch which antennas go into the radio. So it makes sense that it's wired the way it is. But now we've added a little bit of automation to this and it'll be a much more awesome ham radio experience. Guys, that's all I've got for this video. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you share this with your friends. Subscribe to the channel if you're not. My metrics show about 80% of y'all are not subscribed. It's free. It'll give you a warm fuzzy and you could possibly save a kitten somewhere. Make sure you ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any other new videos. And guys, as always, have a great day. 73.